Yo, what's going on guys? Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're checking out iOS 14.2.1, which Apple just released, addressing a number of issues that users have reported specifically on iPhone 12 devices. I've got the green iPhone 12 mini in my hand. It feels pretty great, but here's the thing. Unless you have an iPhone 12, you're not getting this update. So every device outside of the iPhone 12 mini, iPhone 12, iPhone 12 Pro, and iPhone 12 Pro Max do not get iOS 14.2.1 simply because the, the fixes in the update are only relevant to iPhone 12s. It wouldn't have made sense to see an update to everybody that only affected you know a few million devices that have come out in the past month. So I wanna go ahead and show you all the fixes and changes in the update. Drop a like if you're excited, hit subscribe for more. Let's go ahead and jump in. So I talked about this in a video yesterday, but the iPhone 12 has had a pretty smooth launch. There's just been a couple of issues that users have been reporting. One on the iPhone 12 mini, where the lock screen would be acting up with like a screen protector and a case installed on your device. Also, there were issues with messages not going through properly. So Apple has addressed those two specifically in iOS 14.2.1. Starting off with messages, Apple specifically says that there was an issue with MMS messages being received. It doesn't even necessarily say sent. And and I think a broader issue affecting a lot of people that may stem to other devices on iOS 14 is uh, notifications for messages, like actually knowing that you got a message. That was actually the main issue that I highlighted in my video about these issues just yesterday. And so many of you said the same thing. It wasn't really that I, w I just wasn't getting messages. It was that I was getting messages and not being notified. And unfortunately, Apple has not said that they've done anything about that in 14.2.1. But as far as like receiving MMS, you know, non iMessage messages, if you have an iPhone 12 and that was an issue, which it was for seemingly a lot of people, that part of the, the conundrum has been fixed. For me though, a much, much stranger issue was on the lock screen for the iPhone 12 mini. There was an issue where these buttons and swiping wouldn't work. Like touch input was incredibly delayed or it lagged. It wasn't working as expected, specifically when you had a case and screen protector combo installed. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is from another YouTuber here that shared this on their channel. They show that with a screen protector installed only and a case off, you know, it's fine. It works as expected. But as soon as you throw the iPhone 12 mini into a case, like touching the button, swiping, you know, getting touch input as you should, as you should on your new phone, it, it was real weird. It was very inconsistent and it would work sometimes, but not others. So somehow Apple addressed that in this software update. Now, what they did, we don't exactly know, but it, I mean, if you have a mini and you use a case, I don't actually own a mini case just because I'm going caseless this year. But let me and everybody else know down below in the comment section if this fixes your issues, if you're experiencing anything else better on the iPhone 12 mini, because like I never had issues with, you know, the camera buttons and flashlight swiping working, but I definitely saw uh, people were reporting this issue. I gotta actually give Apple props for this because I didn't think that these changes would be rolling out this quickly. I mean, the iPhone 12 mini launched uh, I think just over a week ago now. So it's not even that old and Apple has already jumped in with a fix because you know it's a pretty big deal if you can't properly touch your display. And while the lock screen issue for the iPhone 12 mini has been addressed, there's actually a broader issue affecting a number of users with the iPhone 12 where their screen is shifting green, gray, or yellow. I mean, Apple's really trying to complete the rainbow in their original logo here. I have not experienced this on any of my devices. I talked about this in a video just yesterday, but Apple mentions no fix for that in 14.2.1. And that's probably like the most visually you know frustrating bug if you just buy a new phone I've seen a ton of you guys say yeah when I'm in a true dark interface with brightness all the way up you know the shifting looks a bit weird again I don't have it on my device to show you in person but there's this photo and a couple of other ones floating around online where people are like eh, this just doesn't look right now the good news about this is that I think it will still come in a future update to iOS 14 how do I know this well there was a similar tinting issue with iPhones on iOS 13 like the iPhone 11 series last year and I think through an iOS 13 update later in the year they did fix the green tint issue and it took them a while but somehow they found uh, I guess apparently what was a software and not a hardware issue so if you're having the green tint or yellow tint 
Uh, Apple is aware of it. They are uh, confirmed to be investigating it internally. There's just no public fix available just yet. So, you know, it uh, it's just a kind of a waiting period if you're there and maybe you can get a, a fresh device through swapping it out with Apple. Now, the final issue is with made for iPhone hearing aids that has also been corrected. This is one of the first iPhone 12 issues reported where sound was not coming properly. So if you have made for iPhone hearing aids, update and this should fix all of your issues. That's a super big quality of life change for a lot of people. If you were hoping for new features though, that is not what iOS 14.2.1 is about. Apple's got those things planned for an update coming later this year, iOS 14.3, and I've got that here on the iPhone 12 Pro. Now, Apple's got some cool stuff coming in iOS 14.3. I'll give you a little preview of what's next. What I think is most exciting about iOS 14.3 is that it includes hidden references to a couple of new products that could still be launching this year. You've heard about them, AirTags and AirPod Studio. The latter AirPod Studio, of course, being over ear or on ear. AirPods, headphones, super premium, potentially costing up to $600 for the luxury like leather model. There's also going to be a sport version. 9to5 Mac has found this image of what very well could be AirPods Studio. And for AirTags, there's a lot of evidence that those are also coming with some new graphics like this one right here. These are included in 14.3, which is coming sometime in the future. And then there's some other cool features too. On iPhone 12 Pro devices, there's a new feature called Pro Raw that gives you an insane amount of data uh, additionally that you can capture per photo natively out of the camera app. I've tested this. It is absolutely phenomenal and incredible. There's also support in the camera app as well for scanning app clip codes. Uh, I know Roomba might confuse you, but that is actually not an app clip. That is just our second household pet. There's support in settings for an environmentally friendly search engine called Echosia. I still don't know how to pronounce this, but basically like by searching and using the internet, it actually plants trees to reduce the carbon impact of us living on planet earth which is insane like that apple added that it's pretty sweet of course it's not default because Apple makes a lot of money from Google to be default, but it's here for anybody who's interested. But by far the biggest change in iOS 14.3 that was just added in the beta 2 release currently in testing for developers and public testers, that's how I have access to this early, uh, you can now theme app icons natively. So you know how before there was that really annoying thing where when you themed apps, you had to go to the shortcuts app and it would launch it up. Now this is a skinned messages app. Look at that. The icon is not Apple's and you can completely natively skin and it works just like that. Of course, there is a little pop up at the top, but honestly, that's not bad at all. I, I don't actually mind it. It's kind of cool. I mean, you can go back and forth between these apps and even something like maps as well instantly. This is incredible. I cannot wait for you guys to get your hands on iOS 14.3. Uh, a pretty big, big change for iOS 14. Like they've made the, the custom app icons so much better. Now, of course, it still technically is a bookmark, but like who uses the force touch stuff anyway? You know, music, I mean, eh, it's there, but I don't really need it. I've got my iOS 6 messages app icon and it's sick. In the meantime, though, before iOS 14.3 releases, likely as soon as later this month, we've got 14.2.1 and 14.2 broadly. I've been using this on my iPhone 12 mini for a while. I have not noticed any glaring issues. I'd say absolutely go ahead and update if you're on any of the iPhone 12 models, just because if you didn't have one of these issues, you know, you, you may run into it in the future and perhaps you could avoid it entirely if you just update to 14.2.1. All right, that's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it drop a like if you did hit subscribe for more and i'll catch all of you in my next video